UV mapping. You've heard of it, perhaps it was recommended to you. Maybe you've even tried it. Perhaps you got so frustrated you nearly threw your computer out the window before no! Well, I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be quite so confusing or complicated or difficult. And in fact, this presentation, this video is all about breaking this down, answering every question you might have on the subject matter and making it simple and attainable. If you're new around here, my name is Will Gibbons. I'm a freelance product visualization specialist, and I enjoy making cinematic product videos for companies who really wanna grab the attention of their customers for their next product launch. When I'm not busy working with my clients, I like to create educational tutorials. Typically, I'm making videos on how to render and key shot. Sometimes I'm getting into some 3D modeling stuff. Other times I'm doing live streams about freelance advice, things like that. If any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button because there's lots of content I've produced in the past and there will be a lot more content I will produce in the future. Without further ado, let's dive in. All right, let's get into UV unwrapping. So all your questions answered and why nobody seems to have the perfect solutions for UV mapping textures onto CAD models and what you can do about it. Couple disclaimers before we dive in. I am not an expert on this subject matter. I'm simply sharing what took me many years to learn on my own. The intended audience for this presentation is designers and engineers working mostly in CAD software and usually rendering in KeyShot. And my goal is to save you time and reduce frustration around texture mapping on complex surfaces. And as we dive in, we're gonna cover some basic definitions in order to fully understand this whole UV wrapping stuff. So what does UV unwrapping actually mean? It's a process in which we prepare a 3D model so our textures can then flow across the model surface correctly. So here we see a sphere, which is like a 3D model, and then a UV map on the right that would correspond to that sphere. And then the example down below is, if we have our planet Earth, we see what the UV map for our planet Earth would look like. So what is a map? I keep saying map. Well, a map is simply a 2D image. Um, it's usually an array of pixels in the X and Y axis and we often call these textures in our 3D program. So if we look at the far right, we have a texture or an image of our planet Earth. In this case, we call that a map of the Earth. And this would come out of say a book or be like a, a map on a wall. And then in order to get it to map onto the sphere, the much more complex object, we need this piece in the middle, this, this UV map that is gonna instruct the texture, how to apply itself to that sphere. So why do we unwrap our UV models? It's, uh, we do it to make it easier to place this flat 2D texture on the complex 3D object. Like I said before, the earth is a sphere, but we unwrap it so we can view it on a map for the sake of convenience. So uh, we make it flat so we can put our flat texture on it. Now, we also have to talk about something called coordinates. What are they? They are points in space that allow us to identify a specific location. We can plot points on a graph like we did in school. We can also follow coordinates in the real world to arrive at a specific location on Earth. And we also use coordinates to outline our property or the borders of a country on a map to stick with the theme. So in this image on the right, you can see we've got just a grid and coordinates correspond to each location of those dots on the grid. You can see that uh, in the illustration on the right. Let's talk about what UVs are. They are actually coordinates. Like we plot points on a graph along the X and Y axis in the previous example, we plot coordinates along a U and V axis on a geometric surface. So in our 3D applications, we have X, Y, and Z axes or planes. These are variables used to describe a location within a 3D space. U, V, and W are variables that we use to describe coordinates within a 3D volume or on a model. These are different letters to help distinguish world coordinates from local coordinates. So we use U, V, and W, but most often just U and V, to describe the coordinates on an actual model, like a piece of geometry, whereas X, Y, and Z are reserved for where this model would be located within the the world space, the greater area around it. Hopefully that's clear. For as little as the cost of a cup of coffee, you can support my efforts and help me create more educational content each month. 
I will say the last couple of videos I made were actually informed by requests from current patrons. So if you wanna have a greater influence on the type of content I create, becoming a patron is a great way to do so. And if you just wanna grab the PDF that I'm going to use in today's presentation, head on over to willgibbons.com downloads, and you'll be able to get the PDF from the file vault there. So now what is a UV map? Basically, it's an invisible set of UV coordinates that are applied to a model. They provide instructions to the texture map on how it should be applied to the surface of our model. So all UV mapping information is actually gonna be contained within the 3D model. We don't actually see our UV map. It's not a separate file like a, an image texture map is. Imagine it almost like an invisible net that's been draped over our model and the intersections or the little knots of the ropes in the net is where uh, th that's where the coordinates lie. And those coordinates are going to tell the texture how to apply itself correctly to our complex model. Hopefully that's clear. So what is the goal of unwrapping a model? Well, it's to make our model lay flat so we can take a two dimensional texture or image and map it onto it. In this example, you see a box that's being unwrapped. Imagine this cube going away and we're actually just unwrapping or unfolding a paper box, then we can draw on it whatever we want because it's been flattened out. And then we could fold it back up and now we have our image correctly laid out on the box. So NURB stands for non-uniform rational B-splines and polygons are basically a shape. And we're gonna talk about why we need to understand these two types of geometric data. So 3D software is a lot like countries, if you can imagine. They often speak one main language, either NURBS or polygons, if we were to pretend that these are indeed languages. So how do polygonal models work? Well, our software, our polygonal software, creates 3D models by plotting points or vertices in space, like you see on the bottom left. Then we connect those vertices with edges, and then these edges get connected to create a flat surface or a plane called either a face or a polygon. Um, polygons are made up of multiple faces usually, um, and we build surfaces from polygons, and then that's what creates an enclosed volume. And this is how most polygonal uh, modeling software is going to work. Polygons can have three or more sides, and the best practices for modeling with polygons is to try and create quads or four-sided polygons. And you can see examples of the different shapes a polygon can look like. It doesn't have to be a square, it just has to have four sides. And, um, and so we're gonna talk about why we want quads in a minute here. So a quad-based polygon model will have a grid-like appearance um, in that you can usually follow the lines all the way around the model. They create what are called loops. Now, polygonal models are a bit simpler for computers to shade or render, but they also require a high resolution or many small polygons to make a surface appear smooth. So one of the characteristics or a drawback of polygonal modeling is that you can end up with this faceted um, object where you've got all these flat surfaces. But by subdividing and smoothing, we add more geometry or more smaller squares by cutting them in half many times and uh, we can create a much smoother looking um, polygonal modeling software it includes 3ds max maya moto blender cinema 4d this is not a comprehensive list but these are ones that you've probably heard of and are pretty popular and while some of these softwares could have a little feature that allows you to do something with NURBS, mostly they're categorized as polygonal modeling softwares now i want to talk about the other main type of 3d geometry and 3D type of um, modeling software. And we're gonna talk about NURBS. NURBS software creates 3D models by plotting the points in space, but then connecting them with what's called a spline. So instead of a flat edge like we had with the polygonal modeling program, we use splines. And splines can curve. So if you've used, um, say like the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator, you know there's Bezier handles and you can create a smooth curve using a spline. Well, in this case, that is the underlying structure of the surfaces. Then we create surfaces lofted between these points 
and the splines basically are describing the surface between these points. Um, rather than only working with flat polygons, NURBS are optimized for creating smooth surfaces within an infinite resolution. So remember when we had our polygons here, you have these flat surfaces and by in order to make it appear smooth, you have to add a whole bunch more polygons and then smooth it out with special shading techniques. When working with NURBS, we actually get to have curved surfaces you, uh, defined by those splines. So we don't have to do this subdivision stuff and we don't have to um, add a bunch more surfaces to make it look smooth. And the easiest way to explain this or, uh, is kind of like if you've worked with vector versus uh, raster um, artwork. So in Illustrator, you use vector so you can scale things up infinitely and they still stay nice and sharp. Whereas uh, raster data um, is basically a bunch of pixels. And when you make that image bigger or you zoom into it, you see bigger and bigger pixels. Well, these pixels can be thought of as your polygons and this vector can be thought of as your, your NURBS, okay? Another characteristic of NURBS data is that it's optimized for manufacturing and machines that produce hard goods that we buy. So we, in the product design space, if you're an engineer or product designer, um, you're likely using CAD software because most CAD programs is NURBS based. And it is so because we want to take advantage of those characteristics of the NURBS data to produce um, better quality goods. Another thing is that nerves based models do not have any sort of grid like structure on them. Instead, they consist of what we call nerves patches or areas that the modeling software splits into different, different areas. So in this case, you see a screenshot of a model that was created in CAD and you've got this very continuous, this, this black line that runs down the, the edge of this uh, carafe or this volume. It's been revolved around a central axis. So you get one uninterrupted surface all the way around. But then when you get to the part where the handle connects to the body, you get much smaller NURBS patches and you can see where a feature was added and then it was blended into the other surface using a feature called a fillet. And then it was rounded off using another fillet and all these little NURBS patches get created and that is kind of like when we were looking at the polygonal data, the, the mesh that is created by using uh, connecting multiple polygons or surfaces. Now, the big difference, of course, is that you're gonna have big areas where there's no separation or no breaks in the surface, and then many areas where there's lots of little detailed surfaces as well using NURBS. And finally, NURBS modeling software that's popular that you might have heard of, Autodesk Fusion 360. You've got Onshape, SolidWorks, Siemens NX, Creo, Katia, and there's plenty more too. But once again, these are kind of in uh, a class of their own because we call them um, CAD software, mostly because they use and rely on a NURBS-based system for building data. Now that we understand these two worlds, I wanna return back to the topic of UV unwrapping because again, this is why you're watching this, this demonstration. So the challenges of UV unwrapping a 3D model, now we have enough base knowledge that, that this should make sense. So the first thing I wanna talk about is tessellation. When we take our nerves based models from a CAD software and bring it into somewhere like Keyshot to render them, we actually need to tessellate them. And what that does is it actually breaks those smooth infinite uh, surfaces, uh, those NURBS patches into a mesh of polygons. Keyshot automatically turns it into a mesh of triangles, even though this example on screen is all quads. Um, but in this case, our NURBS data is being triangulated or tessellated, and it needs to, uh, before it can be unwrapped, it has to be turned into a mesh. That's just one of the requirements. Another thing to mention is topology. So when working, if you're working with a quad-based polygonal model, you will have a topology that lends itself to placing seams right where you want them because it's gonna have a pretty evenly distributed grid of polygons. But if we're working with our NURBS-based model, after we tessellate it, we're gonna see that we're usually left with what is called poor tessellation, or sorry, poor topology due to the discrepancy between the triangles that we get as a result. 
um, on this image on the right, sorry for the compression, but you're seeing tons of itty bitty little skinny triangles and then some bigger triangles. You can see on this flat surface, the triangles are more regular shaped. And then you'll notice where we had NURBS patches where like fillets and other features existed. Um, we have much smaller triangles. So imagine trying to create some nice seams in this area where we have all these jagged triangles. What if you want your texture to come right across where these triangles are? There's no way to do that. So this is what we call um, poor topology. It may render fine, like the way it looks, but when it comes to having to unwrap this and create seams on your model, the, the distribution and, and irregular shapes of these triangles is gonna make it really difficult to do that. Placing seams. So most 3D models are solids or closed watertight surfaces. We can't unwrap a closed surface without splitting the edges open. So we do that by creating what are called seams. Placing seams is typically easy to do with good topology, like I mentioned. With quad-based polygon data, uh, usually you've got kind of a grid type shape that we can easily split along the edges. But if we have this big network of crazy triangles that we just looked at here, it's gonna be really hard to create a nice clean line that cuts across these. In some cases, it will be impossible. So placing seams is gonna be a challenge when working with CAD data specifically, because when it gets tessellated, it's going to ruin or create poor topology. Ah, there is another point here, stretching. So when we use the UV mapping technique on CAD data, uh, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get stretching. And in this case, you've got um, square textures on this model, and sometimes they look like skinny rectangles. Well, believe it or not, it's the same texture that's being stretched in different directions. And the reason it's getting stretched is because if we looked at the distribution of triangles back here, you'll see that they're, they're pretty equilateral in the flat areas. But then when they go tall and skinny here on the side, you'll see that they cause the texture to get stretched. So in order to get around this, some software can allow you to control how and where the stretching happens within the UV map. Okay, so we'll talk more about that in a second but stretching is an issue you're gonna run into, especially with CAD data. So let's talk about actually how we unwrap our 3D model. Now that we know what UV uh, unwrapping is, we know what UVs are, we know what coordinates are, we know the pros and cons of polygonal data versus NURBS-based data, and the challenges that come with unwrapping, how do we actually do this? Well, if you're working within a polygonal software, like one of those ones I mentioned earlier, 3ds Max, Moto, Maya, Cinema 4D, Blender, they have tools built into them that you can use to assign your UV coordinates and unwrap the model. If you have access to those tools, use those that are built in your, your modeling software because they're more likely to work than relying on a third-party tool to do that. And then, um, of course, once you've done that, you can export your model from your rendering software and then bring it into Keyshot to render. Uh, like I said before, the, the UV map is contained within the 3D geometry. So if you save your file out as like, a, like an FBX model, which is a, an industry standard mesh, that should work in most cases. And it will bring that UV data into Keyshot or whatever rendering software you're using. Now, if you're like the rest of the audience here, likely you're using a CAD or a NURBS based software. And that's what led you to this video. You have five options. They're not all great, but you have five options of ways to unwrap a model. The first one is try using Keyshot's built-in UV unwrapping tool. It's fairly new. However, it's quite limited in its functionality and its user friendliness. Um, I tried figuring it out when they first rolled out the feature and um, I have not made a follow-up tutorial on it yet. I, I will be. The goal is after this uh, lecture, I will create a couple of new UV unwrapping uh, tutorials within Keyshot. But know that because it's built into the render engine instead of the 3D modeling software, it has limited functionality, okay? So you may have some success with it, but maybe not exactly what you need. Your next option is to try creating your 3D model using surface lofts within your 3D um, modeling software where possible. And try to rely on the natural UV grid that gets built into your 
um, surfaces within your CAD modeling software. So the, it's a bit like playing the lottery. Like I said, it's not always possible to control, but for example, if you create surface lofts, you can kind of dictate the direction that that surface is going to go and you can reduce or um, you know eliminate certain NURBS patches from being created. And that's going to give you um, a, a better chance of creating a surface that will accept a texture without having issues or splits or stretching. Your third option is to export your CAD model as a mesh, so a non-NURBS like a STL, a FBX, or an OBJ file, and then import that into a software that does have UV unwrapping tools and try using them on your tessellated model. So for example, you could be, you know, working in Fusion 360, you could export, I don't know, an FBX, and then you could bring that FBX into say Blender and then try using Blender's UV tools. Uh, how successful that is will largely depend on the tessellation you get out of say Fusion 360 or whatever that CAD application is. You don't typically get to control how that stuff gets tessellated, which leads us to our next step, which is rebuild your surfaces or your next option, sorry, rebuild your surfaces that need to be UV unwrapped in a polygonal modeling program and then add them into the NURBS based parts that won't need UV unwrapping. So what this means is, let's say I have a model where 95% of it is not going to need to be UV unwrapped, but there is one very organic surface that will need UV unwrapping. I can bring that, uh, I'm sorry, I can go into a different software like Blender and then I can model just the surface I need that I know is going to need to have UV unwrapping applied to it. And I can apply the UV unwrapping or, you know, the UV coordinates in say Blender or whatever, and then bring these together into Keyshot as two separate models. And, uh, and then I get the best of both worlds basically. And then five, the last option is to use a standalone UV unwrapping tool like Rhizome UV. I have never uh, had success with Rhizome UV. I know some people have, uh, but it is a standalone software that's meant to provide this solution for people who have to apply textures to complex surfaces on CAD models, things like that. So those are your five options. None of them are perfect, but they are all things that could help out. Now, what are my personal recommended methods for UV unwrapping out of all those methods? Uh, first of all, it's going to be to try to use procedural textures whenever possible. Procedural textures do not need UV mapping because they work in uh, a volume space. So they um, are infinite in, X, in, in the UV and W directions. And when you apply them to a CAD model, they will, like magic, make it look like your model is made of that material. So if it's like marble or wood, it's going to project all the way through the model and you just don't need to do any UV unwrapping with it, and it's great. Now, the other option is to use Keyshot's UV unwrapping tool like I mentioned, and for simple shapes that need to be unwrapped, like a, a um, like a, oh, what do they call it? Like a um, shell or something like that, um, or, or like a tube or a pipe, like those work pretty well in Keyshot. Uh, my third step or option would be to remodel parts in Blender that I know will need to be UV unwrapped that I can't do in Keyshot. So that's typically what I do. I can tell usually before I get started on a project what parts I will be able to do in Keyshot and what parts I cannot. And that just comes with a little bit of um, experience and understanding these methods that we've talked about in this presentation. Uh, number four, use Blender's uh, UV unwrapping tools to assign UVs properly. Um, on very simple CAD models, I've been able to get that to work, but like I mentioned before, due to the tessellation, getting the uh, CAD file into, into Blender and then back out with those UVs properly assigned can be a little tough. And then import the UV geometry from Blender into Keyshot and use it with the nerve space parts in Keyshot that I didn't need to uh, do the UV editing on. So basically I'm pulling one part or two parts from Blender and then the rest of my assembly from my CAD software importing both to Keyshot and then just lining them up if I need to reposition them. And the last ditch effort is to use Photoshop if needed to touch up some poor texture mapping. Uh, that means like cleaning up seams or trying to um, you know deal with stretching. But I try to avoid this at all costs because it can create a lot of manual labor that um, I'm really just not interested in, in getting into. But it is there as a last ditch effort, like I mentioned. So 
hopefully you've learned a lot through this whole thing. What are your next steps? What should you do next here? Well, first of all, if you learn anything from this, please share it with somebody that you think could learn from it. Either send them the link to this video or, or the PDF or whatever. Next, if you wanna start using Keyshot's UV unwrapping tool, watch my latest tutorial on that. I'm not sure if that's been uploaded by the time uh, this has been published, but I will try to make sure that there is at least a new UV unwrapping tutorial when this goes live. Next, if you still have questions, corrections, or if I missed anything, comment down below. Please remember to be polite. And last, if you wanna support my efforts on this channel, consider joining my Patreon. I mentioned it's patreon.com slash Will Gibbons. I also have a link below to that. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. Until next time, happy rendering.